Welcome to Record, Mix and Release, a YouTube series which takes you through the process of recording a song from beginning to end in your home studio and releasing it to the world. And in this episode, we will be getting started with some planning. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. And welcome to the first episode of this series where we will be recording, mixing and releasing a song to the world from a home studio. Now in this episode, we're gonna be talking about pre-production, we're gonna be preparing our software for the recording, and we're also gonna be laying down our first couple of guide tracks. So please stick around for all of that. Now, if you wanna get notifications about the other episodes, or indeed other videos that I make on this channel, all about home recording, DAWs, plugin reviews, gear reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about those other videos. Now before we get stuck into pre-production, I just want to take a quick look at what software and hardware you're going to need to record your own song and release it to the world. So assuming you already have a computer, you're going to need some digital audio workstation software. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, so we usually call it a DAW or a DAW. Now there are plenty to choose from, but in this series I'm going to be using Cakewalk by BandLab, which is completely free, fully featured and more than capable for this purpose. However, if you already have a favourite DAW, then please feel free to use that. You should still be able to follow along in this series. Now, I will be using some commercial plugins in this series, but please don't feel that you have to use them. It's perfectly possible for you to record a song using just stock plugins. Now, although you're gonna see me using an audio interface with many inputs, a control surface, and several microphones, these things are not completely necessary. What you will need is an audio interface with one or preferably two inputs, at least one microphone, and a pair of headphones. I also highly recommend getting yourself a controller keyboard. I'll put some links in the description to the hardware that I recommend for you. Now, let's start preparing to record our song. So in this series, I will be recording one of my own compositions called I Don't Buy, and I'll put a link in the description down below so that you can check out the finished product. Now, of course, you can write songs from within the software itself, and lots of people do that. But in this series, I'm gonna be looking at a more traditional method where the writer has already written at least the lyrics, the melody, and the basic chord progression for the song. And then you're ready to record. Or are you? I'd like to mention a few things that I think you should think about before you start recording. The first is arrangement, and I'll talk about this in two halves. The first half is the structural arrangement. This is the basic sequence of events which happens in the song. Does it start off with an intro, then a verse, a verse, a chorus, a bridge, etc.? Or however your song goes, it doesn't matter. But it's a really good idea at this stage to have a kind of a roadmap for the structural arrangement of the song. Now you may change things later, that is possible, but it is best if you have a really good plan about this at the beginning. The next type of arrangement I'd like to talk about is the harmonic arrangement. And this really alludes to which instruments will you be using in the song and what kind of roles will they be playing. Now again, you may change this later. Sometimes you think, yeah, I'm gonna have a piano come in in the chorus, but then when you go to try it, it just doesn't sound right. And then other times you try some random instrument instrument in the recording process and it's magic. So you can change things later, but it's a good idea at the beginning to have an idea about what you will be recording. Now, the last thing I'd like to mention, and you may not like this one because it's a little boring, but do make sure you have well rehearsed your song before you start recording. If you ignore this piece of advice, I promise you, you will spend many frustrating hours hitting record and playing the wrong chord or singing the wrong lyric and it's just gonna drive you nuts and you'll probably give up. So just make sure you put a little bit of extra effort in and do some rehearsal before you start recording. Now, now that you have an idea about the arrangement and you've done some rehearsal, it's time to start setting up your DAW software for recording. Okay, so here we are in Cakewalk and I'm going to click on new project and then click on the empty project template to open a nice fresh 
project. Now the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the audio settings that I have for the song. I'm recording at a sample rate of 48 kilohertz and a bit depth of 24. Now these settings are often debated in forums around the internet and I do not wish to enter that debate now. But I will say that I think that 48 kilohertz is more than enough quality for most people's recordings these days. Now your audio interface may allow you to record at a much higher sample rate than that, but you may also have problems later down the line with pops and clicks and dropouts as you add more and more to your project. So in order to avoid that, it's best to stick to these kind of settings in my opinion. Now as I say, I have it set to 48 kilohertz. Now that's because I record a lot of video and indeed this is going to be on video. But for most people, if they're just recording audio, you should use 44 kilohertz as your basic setting. Now, the first thing I'd like to set up within the project is the actual tempo. Now in Cakewalk, what I do is I have it set all the playhead all the way back to the beginning. I go to project, insert tempo change, and I have this button here, which is to tap the tempo out. Now, most DAWs have that feature these days where you can tap out the tempo and it's incredibly useful. But the other thing that I like to do is rather than sit in front of my DAW and kind of guess at that tempo in a very sterile way, is I actually use my phone to record my rehearsals of the song. And then what I do is I play that back that recording on my phone and I tap along with that. And that's just what I'm going to do now. Okay, so that's come out to 71 BPM. I'll click on OK, and that is my tempo locked in. So at this stage, I'm gonna go ahead and save my project. So I'll go up to File, and then click on Save As, and I'm just gonna call it by the name of the song, which is I Don't Buy. Now here in Cakewalk, when I click on Save, what it actually does is it creates a folder of the same name, it saves the song within there, and it creates some extra folders within there for the audio, etc., which is a really handy way to organize your projects. Now if your DAW doesn't do that, I highly recommend you think about doing that, because it's very important when you get lots and lots of projects to organize them well. So now that I have the tempo set up, I'm going to go ahead and start to set up my actual click track. So I really hate to play along with the metronome which normally comes with most DAWs. I find it way too sterile and instead what I like to do is create a very simple drum loop to play along with. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go to insert virtual instruments in Cakewalk, uh, click uh, or open the Cakewalk folder and then drag in the SI drum kit. Now this is a virtual instrument which comes for free with Cakewalk. Your DAW may include a free drum kit as well but if it doesn't there are a few that you can download for free from the web. Web. Now I'm just going to click OK to insert that as a simple instrument track, so I'll click OK and then I'll just wait for that and drag it out a bit so I can see it more clearly and then I'm just going to open up the interface for that virtual instrument so you can see it. Now I'm going to start off by recording a hi-hat part and that sounds like this. I'm just going to play it on my MIDI controller keyboard here. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, please do make sure if you can get a MIDI controller keyboard, you're going to make your life much, much easier in this process. Now, that's OK. So I'll, I'll arm the track for record up here so it's ready to record. And I just want to make sure I've got the right recording mode because I'm going to record this hi-hat and then I'm going to record the kick and the snare over the top of it. And I want to record it all to the same track. So I'm going to long press on my record button here and choose sound on sound as the recording mode. I'm also going to name the track so I'll just go over here and I'll name it X Drums. Now that's a little naming convention of mine. Basically anything that I think I'm going to delete later I'll just put that X prefix on it and it's just a bit easier to see and I will definitely will be deleting this later. Now I'm about ready to record. I'm just going to move the playhead to the beginning of the second bar there and I'm going to give myself a four beat count in and record that hi-hat.
Okay, two bars is just enough, so I'll highlight that little clip, and I'm going to click click Q on the keyboard, which is for quantizing Cakewalk. Uh, the, the setting there is fine, so I'll just click OK, and that quantizes that. And I can see visually, actually, that that's quantized that correctly, so I don't need to check it, but it may be worth your while checking it after you do quantize. So now I'm ready to record the kick and the snare. Now I'm not going to be using the full snare sound, which sounds like this. Instead, I'm just going to be using that sort of side stick sound. That. That's more appropriate for this song, um, but you'll have to find what's the best sounds for you. So I'm um, all ready to go there. I've got it set up to record um, for four beats before, and I'll just click on record and record those parts. Okay, so that's my kick and my snare. Now I'm going to open up this uh, button here. I'm going to click on that to open up the track lanes because in Cakewalk here, it's recorded them on two separate take lanes. And I'm just going to click this uh, second one here, which is the kick and the snare. And I'm going to click Q on my keyboard to quantize that. Now the resolution that I'm going to have to select for quantizing this is uh, 16th triplets. Now. For your song, obviously, it's going to be different. You're going to have to figure out which is the best setting for you. But I've already figured out that I need 16th triplets. So I'll click on OK. And I'm just going to play that to make sure it sounds OK. And that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to select those two clips there, Shift, and select that one. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on bounce to clips that just squashes them all into one click I'm just going to delete that take lane which is the spare one there and then squash those down so I can't see those take lanes anymore so now I have um, all of those drums all in one neat little clip now what I'm going to do and this is a little bit specific to cakewalk is I'm going to loop these over a period of time um, if you don't have looping features in your DAW then what you can simply do is just obviously copy and paste these um, for as much time as you think you need. Now, I probably know this song is going to be, well, about four minutes or so, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to loop it for about five or six minutes. So here in Cakewalk, what I'll do is just right click and in fact, what I'll do is just drag the end of it out so that it's uh, ending right at the end of the bar there. I'll right click and I'll click on Groove Clip Looping. So that sets that up. And all I have to do now is drag the end of that out for as much time as I think I'll need it. So I'll just drag it out like so, and you can see it looping away there. Um, that brings me up to two and a half minutes, uh, not enough. Um, so I'm just gonna, sorry, zoom out a bit more and keep dragging it across. Well, that's going to be more than enough. That's um, all the way up to five and a half minutes there. So that should be fine. So I'll zoom back in. I don't need all that and go back to the beginning of the track. So now I have my drum loop um, ready to use and we'll just have a quick listen to it. That's absolutely fine. Now the last thing I'm going to do just to finish this off is I'm just going to go uh, put the playhead right back to the beginning and I'm just going to record a little count in for myself so that I can completely turn the metronome off for recording later when I'm recording other instruments. So I'll quickly do that now on the hi-hat. That's fine. Again, I'll go to that. I'll click on Q to quantize. I'll just change the setting to uh, one quarter there. Click OK. And that's quantized that for me. I can disarm for recording. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is, is save this file. Now, what I like to do, I'll go up to File here, click on Save As. Rather than save it as the same name, what I like to do is put a little number on the end. So in this case, I'm going to have it still say I don't buy, but I'm going to put 001 on the end. And I will increment those numbers each time I have achieved a certain step I'll save it as a new number that's just really helpful if you need to kind of go back in your history so I'll click Save and that is done and we have our click track 
So finally, I'm ready to start recording my first guide track, which is gonna be an acoustic guitar. Now, what is a guide track? These are simply temporary tracks which we lay down to help us know where we are in the song. And also, when we're recording other instruments, it kind of gives us something to play against so that it's not completely lifeless for us. Now, even though these are just rough tracks and you shouldn't spend too much time on them at all, there are still a couple of things that you wanna make sure you get right. First of all, if you're recording a guitar, Guitar, do make sure it's in tune. It's really going to throw you off later if you're adding other instruments and you find that the guitar you've recorded as a guide track is out of tune. So just use a tuner and get it in tune, as always when you're recording a guitar. Now the second thing is, I do want to make sure I get my levels at least roughly right. Now I'm going to talk about levels in future videos when I come to do the sort of proper recordings of instruments. But as a quick guide, I'm going to say definitely don't allow it to peak. That's It should reach zero db at all in fact you want it to be quite a bit lower than that you want it to peak at around about minus 12 and have an average level of about minus 18 db now these are just rough figures folks don't sit there and try and get it exactly right that's not going to happen just roughly minus 18 as an average level minus 12 as a peak. Now with all that said, my guitar is in tune, I've already set up my levels and I'm ready to start recording this guide track. So now we're gonna record the guide vocal using much the same approach as we did with the guide guitar. Just setting up a rough recording level. I'm just using this microphone, which is handy. It's not my mic of choice for my vocals, but I just wanna get stuck in and get this guide vocal in one or two takes at maximum. Now, if you find that it's taking you more than two takes to do a guide vocal, then you're either being too fussy or you haven't rehearsed enough. Now let's get on and make this guide vocal. I met an old man by the sea I met a man of mystery So now that we've recorded our guide tracks, it's time to do a little bit of housekeeping. Now it's tempting to skip this little task, but I can assure you it's well worth spending a few minutes to do it. And what we're gonna actually do is add some markers in. Once you have markers on the track, it's really easy to start navigating around your project as it gets more complicated. And now is a good time to do it because we have those instruments in place which indicate where particular things in the song happen. So I'll start right at the beginning here, just on around the third bar. And in Cakewalk here, I just click M on the keyboard and that brings up the dialogue here to insert a marker. And I'll call this marker intro. And there is that marker in there. It's kind of small in Cakewalk, but it is there. Now I'm just gonna move forward to the bar, the seventh bar here. This is where the vocal comes in for the first verse. I'm just gonna show you that I do have some kind of naming conventions, which I use. You can use your own, but what I do is something like this. It's a verse, so I put V, it's verse one, so I put V1, and then I put a colon, and then I just type out the first few lyrics of that verse. So the lyrics are, um, I met, an old man. That just helps you to differentiate the different verses from each other when you're navigating around. Um, for choruses, I just usually call them chorus one, two, three, four, etc. Uh, bridges, I might do the same thing and just um, use some of the first few words of the lyrics just to help me know my way around the song. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all the markers to this song now, but I'll speed up the video so you don't have to watch me do that. Okay, so now I've added all of those markers. I'm now gonna make some changes to that little drum loop I made for the click track. Now the reason is there's a few places where it's actually a little bit distracting. So I'll explain. Um, there's a section in the middle here where it actually goes down very, very quiet and there's just gonna be an organ in that section with a very high pitched vocal. And I just don't need that kick and that snare drum in there. I'm just gonna leave the click in that part. And also there's another section towards the 
end um, where in actual fact it's very typical of a song the last few bars actually slow down gradually now I managed to pull it off when I played the guitar part but the final guitar part is going to be the instrument which leads that slow down so I just want the click to completely stop there to completely go from the song so I'll be lopping that off at that point so I'm just going to go ahead and do all of that now make adjustments to that click track and again I will speed up the video for you so you don't don't have to endure uh, watching me do this. Okay, so that's all of the housekeeping I think we need to do at the moment. We've got our markers in place, we've got a nice click track in place, and we've recorded a couple of guide tracks. So next we'll be getting on with recording some actual instrument parts. Thank you so much for watching this episode in the series. In the next episode, we will be adding the bass guitar part to our song. Now, if you liked this video, then you can show your appreciation by hitting the like button. It really does help me out. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about other episodes and content from this channel. And I'll see you in the next video.